What does she argue about? Well, every little thing. If you sit down in a long chair or something like that. Doesn't like the stuff you get in the store. Uh-huh. Then she calms down. Well, see, have you always tried to please her? Yes. Mm -hmm. Always tried to please her. I used to clean the house for them as a small Well, now, why do you think she argues like that? Think she, yeah, she she's sick. Well, she doesn't try to control her temper. I, I see. Mm -hmm. How about your father? He's a swell guy. He's a swell fellow. He gets kind of hot tempered. Since my mother's been sick, it's been costing a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's lost a lot of weight about mm -hmm. worrying. Yeah, I see. My mother argues with him, she wants to know where the money is. Mm -hmm. But I don't care about that, Mom. Yeah. Everything turns out all right. Well, now, uh, this jumping, what does that make you think of? Think about it a minute. Uh, I can't help it, it just jumps. Uh -huh. How about the legs? Do you know anybody who had any trouble with their legs like that? No, sir. Except, what does that make you think of? Go on. Except several, several years ago, uh -huh. there was one fellow. He had something wrong with his right leg. Mm -hmm. Water in the knee, but he's walking today. That hasn't bothered me. Was that anything like your leg? I don't know. He couldn't walk at all. Mm. He couldn't walk at all? No. What do you think of when you can't walk like that? I wish I could walk. Mm -hmm. But what do you think of? What comes to your mind when you find that you can't walk? So maybe I think my mother and father should be okay. Sometimes I wonder, hope mm -hmm. the war ends soon. And things like that. I Nothing see. in particular. Mm -hmm. well, now the shakes are gone now, haven't they? Yeah. How about your legs? They're good and strong. Right. Move them. Let's raise them. Oh, I don't see them raising before, but I can't walk. Well, how about them now? They feel all right. They feel good now, as if you can walk them, don't they? Toes feel numb. Toes feel numb, but that's going away, isn't it? Yeah. Jeez. Hmm? So raising them fine, isn't it? Yeah. Now you're going to be able to walk, aren't you? I don't know. Well, you're going to, aren't you? Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to walk. I love walking. You love walking. I do. Always been very fond of walking. Now yes. you've found yourself unable to walk. Now you're going to get right up and walk. Right now. All right, now let's sit up. Sit up on the side of the bed. Here you are. That's fine. All right, now stand up. And look at that. That's good. All right, now walk out of here. Walk over to the nurse all by yourself. That's the boy. Walk over to the nurse. You're just a little woozy. That's the medicine. Now come back to me. Come back to me. Open your eyes. That's the boy. Isn't that fine? Isn't that wonderful? Sure. All right. Now again. Once more. Oh, it's going to stay that way. It's going to stay because that's taking care of your worry now. All right. Now come on back to me and I'm going to let you go to sleep. When you wake up, you'll keep on walking perfectly well. How about it? Thanks, sir. Right on. All right, now let's get up in here and we'll go to sleep. Now, there you are. Now, I'm going to have you go right to sleep. When you wake up, it'll be all right. All right, sleep, Gerardi. The fact that he can walk now does not mean that his neurosis has been cured. That will require time. But the way has been opened for the therapy to follow. Now, a new way of living begins. Very different from the old one whose purpose was killing and trying not to be killed. Now in an environment of peace and safety, all the violence behind them, they are building rather than destroying. Men have their choice of occupational therapy. Some find relaxation in mechanical jobs. Certain types of cases obtain relief in precision work, which answers their inner need for order and certainty. For sons and daughters and nieces and nephews and neighbors' kids, hobby horses are turned out by the car loan. Physical reconditioning is not the only purpose in sports which also serve to bring men out of their emotional isolation and back into group activity. One of the most important procedures is group psychotherapy. Here, under the psychiatrist's guidance, the patient learns to understand something of the basic causes of his distress. As one of a group, he also learns to understand that his inner conflicts are, with variations, common to all men. And I think of it a little bit like this. We want to get you out of your own feeling of isolation, to get you to feel that you are like other people. In order to get to that, 
we have to use knowledge as one thing and something else which uh, has to be added. And that is an experience of safety. You could say it is almost the core of all our treatment methods. Development of knowledge of oneself with the accompanying safety that it brings. I'd like to see if we can get some illustrations of how one's personal safety would stem from childhood safety and how the childhood safety self would stem from the parents' safety. Uh, and my illustration is that as a child, uh, whenever I, I underwent any experiences that were frightening to me, I never uh, told my parents. I kept it to myself. While I was alone at night in my room, I'd call on God. So if I had done anything wrong that I was ashamed of, I was ashamed to go to my parents and, and tell them uh, what I had done. So I kept it to myself. And I used to, I know I used to be in constant fear that my parents would find out my feelings. Well, I wonder if there's any of your mother's troubles that you would know about. No, I'm, uh, my mother never uh, gave any of the children any, any part of her troubles. Well, that would be the same thing that happened to you. She didn't tell her troubles, and you didn't tell yours. You took your troubles to God, and she probably did the same thing, probably didn't even confide in your father. In other words, the kind of method that you used to get relief from anxiety was really, we'd have to assume, learned and felt right in your home the same kind of thing. I think One it was all caused by uh, economic conditions of the world. I mean, uh, people trying to comp uh, compete one another, trying to get a better job, trying to keep up with the uh, uprising, living things like that, of course, a lot of arguments in the home. Mother and father arguing about the uh, price of the food, and that has been reflection on the children, right. things like that. So I think that was one of the causes of worse Not having enough food to eat for the arguments between well, the both. mother and I mean, uh, there was... Well, which was the worst, though? Well, I guess the arguments. Sure, they of course, the Because I can't remember about the food. <laughs> there you are. You can't even remember about the food or the lack of food. I have in mind my own childhood. We're uh, coming from a moderate family. Moderate in the sense that uh, the family had some sense of security. What happened there was we were told that uh, we, I mean, my, myself, my brothers and sisters, we couldn't just play with any of the kids we wanted to play with. Uh, unless their parents, in turn, had the equivalent of what our parents had. And as a result, we were kept in a narrow circle, very, very narrow. However, uh, I have found that there has been a strong yearning on my part to break out of this environment, to be able to uh, play with Tom that can happen. I'd say the net results like this. Your mother did not feel really so superior she felt inferior when she tried to make you take the attitude you were better than the other children. So that now, certain experiences in the army have brought that out more clearly because you've been thrown in with Tom and Dick and Harry and need to get along with them. It's not necessary to be in the army. It's not necessary to, to be in the war. These kind of troubles have always gone on in all time through all the centuries. Are you going to say something? I never spoke until I was seven. Is that right? Yes, sir. And I studied very bad. At 14 and 15, I couldn't recite in school. <coughs> they didn't to talk. Can you explain how you got started to talk? How you began to get over that? Uh, during, during the war, the first word I ever spoke, um, Santa Claus had brought me a, a war gun. And my brother broke it. This is the first war. Yes. So, um, <laughs> when, I in, and your brother broke yeah, when I went in to get my gun, I was, I just says, walk dead. Somebody broke my gun. That was the first thing I said. You were angry because someone broke your gun. That's right. So that's where I started. So. I would say all those symptoms, like being unable to speak, stuttering and so on, they have an underlying anger and resentment in the deeper parts of the personality. You could almost say it like this. Underneath, I can't, you usually find 
I won't. Kevin, on uh, Okinawa, I was stuttering too about three weeks. And uh, as soon as I came here, I'm here a month now, I stopped stuttering. You've yeah. stopped stuttering completely yeah. since you came here? Yes, sir. Well, that's good. I don't know whether that's a tribute to the doctors or a tribute to your fundamental yes. health. Yes, to my fundamental self. <clears throat> no, no tribute to the doctors at all. Very good. <laughs>